Hello friends, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Maryam Hassan and I am here to make medicine and dentistry easy for you. So today's video is a second in series of osteology of head and neck. In previous video we discussed about visceral and frontal bone in detail. If you haven't watched that video make sure you do, I'll share the link with you guys in description box below. Also do not forget to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my channel. So our Mr. Skull is ready with us, let's begin. Today's topic is maxilla which is uh, green in color in this skull so that it is differentiated from all other surrounding bones. It is a paired bone and it is divided into two halves in the midline. So let me just zoom in a little bit. Perfect. Okay. So it is divided into two halves. This is the first half, this is the second half. And both of these halves join to form few structures. The first one is the upper jaw, which is formed by the two halves. The second structure is the lateral walls and the inferior wall or the floor of the nasal aperture. Third thing is that it forms the part of floor of orbital cavities. And then it forms the anterior part of palate. This one over here. Now this posterior part is formed by the palatine bone. And over here in the mid, we've got an intermaxillary suture where both the halves of maxilla meet. I've sectioned the maxilla into one half for better understanding. Each half of the maxilla consists of two main sections. First section is the body and the second section is the processes. So the body mainly consists of the maxillary sinus which is air filled space and each half has its own maxillary sinus and it is an air filled space and it communicates with the nasal cavities and it acts as a voice resonator. So over here this is going to be the maxillary sinus okay so now we've got four processes and the first process is the frontal process the second process is the zygomatic process third process is the alveolar process and the fourth process is the palatine process now talking about the surfaces of the maxilla We've got four surfaces of maxilla. The first surface is the anterior surface. Then we've got the posterior surface. Then we've got the orbital surface. And we've got the nasal surface. So let's study each surface in detail. So let's talk about the anterior surface of maxilla. Now both the halves of maxilla have similar structures, similar bony prominences, similar uh, bony markings on both the sides and both of them form a single unit. So let's just zoom in and talk about the bony markings of anterior surface. Okay, so the first marking that I want to talk about is this area over here. This area is referred to as the incisive bone or the premaxilla and this holds the upper four incisors, two centrals and two laterals. Then I'll talk about the alveolar yolks of maxilla which are these prominences of orange color that you can see over here for each tooth socket. And the most prominent of these is the one for canine over here and it is referred to as canine eminence. It is a bulge in the alveolar process where it covers the root of canine and it is the most prominent of all the root eminences. Then we've got this purple shaded region over here which is referred to as the canine fossa. It is present just below the infraorbital foramen. This is the infraorbital foramen and it is present lateral to the canine eminence. So this is canine eminence and just lateral to it we've got this canine fossa. 
it is a depression and it is a site of origin for caninus muscle which is levator anguli oris so also we've got one more fossa in this region which is referred to as incisive fossa and the canine eminence basically serves as the um, midline or the differentiating point between the canine fossa and the incisive fossa so then we've got this nasal notch over here in this region and also we've got the infraorbital margin over here infraorbital margin of maxilla and we've got the infraorbital foramen which is present just below the orbit and it allows the passage for infraorbital artery infraorbital vein and infraorbital nerve and infraorbital nerve is the branch of maxillary nerve and maxillary, maxillary nerve is the branch of the trigeminal nerve so now the infraorbital nerve basically divides into three more branches when it exits the infraorbital foramen the first is the inferior palpebral branch that uh, supplies the lower eyelid then we've got the external nasal nerve that supplies the nose and then we've got the superior labial nerve that supplies the upper lip and both the halves of maxilla join over here to form the bony prominence or bony spine that is known as interior nasal spine and this basically concludes our interior surface of maxilla now let's move on towards the posterior surface of maxilla so now let's just rotate this maxilla to its posterior surface so this is the posterior surface of maxilla and over here we've got this area which is referred to as the infratemporal surface of maxilla because it forms the anterior boundary or it forms the interior wall of infratemporal fossa posterior to this there is the infratemporal fossa okay so now the next thing that i'm talking about is this green section over here this section is the uh maxillary tuberosity this is the dense bone which is present posterior to the third molars so this is present just posterior to the third molars over here in this section so then we've got these small foramina tiny foramina present over here in this section and these foramina basically allow the passage of posterior superior alveolar nerve and vessels and they, these vessels go and supply to the posterior teeth of the upper jaw also there is the infraorbital groove which we can see over here in this region like this this is a groove that converts into the infraorbital canal and then it exits onto the interior surface of maxilla as the infraorbital foramen so moving on to the uh, orbital surface of maxilla so orbital surface of maxilla basically consists of the this is the infraorbital margin of maxilla then we've got this infraorbital canal that uh, ends as infraorbital foramen and this is the infraorbital surface oh, sorry this is the orbital surface of uh, maxilla and this notch over here is termed as the lacrimal notch and over here the maxillary bone or the maxillary uh, process basically articulates with the lacrimal bone so that's it for the orbital surface now moving on towards the nasal surface of maxilla so this is a nasal surface of the maxilla and i've rotated it inwards like this so let's talk about the bony markings the first one is the maxillary sinus which is a hollow cavity and secondly i'll be talking about the oblique ridges so here are the two oblique ridges that we can see in red color the first one or the top one is referred to as ethmoidal crest and the bottom one is referred to as conchal crest now ethmoidal crest is posteriorly articulating with the middle nasal concha and the conchal crest is basically articulating posteriorly with the inferior nasal concha so moving on 
we'll talk about the lacrimal crest that I've previously discussed in the orbital uh, surface. So this is a V-shaped notch which is the um, lacrimal notch and this basically continues into the lacrimal groove. This is the lacrimal groove over here and this groove basically converts into the nasal lacrimal canal which transmits the nasal lacrimal duct and this duct opens into the inferior meatus of the nose. Then we've got the lacrimal margin of maxilla over here. This is the lacrimal margin of maxilla and this is the border that basically articulates with the lacrimal bone. So now I'll talk about the lower half of the nasal surface that is the basically referred to as the palatine process of maxilla. So let's just take it a bit higher. Okay. So this is the palatine process of maxilla, this portion. So over here, this this is basically the uh, incisive bone or the premaxilla that I talked about. Let me just rotate it and show it to you guys. So this is the palatine bone. Uh, sorry, the premaxilla or the incisive bone. And then we've got some canals over here. These canals are basically referred to as the incisive canals and these allow the passage of the nasopalatine nerves and the sphenopalatine arteries. So these are the incisive canals over here. Then we've got the palatine process of maxilla. This is the palatine process of maxilla. And here we've got the palatine grooves. So this is the palatine grooves of maxilla. And these grooves basically allow the passage of uh, descending palatine vessels and anterior palatine nerves from the sphenopalatine ganglion. These are the same nerves that passed through this greater palatine groove over here. So this is a view of the palatine process of maxilla. This is the palatine process of maxilla. These are the incisive canals that we've talked about. These are the uh, palatine grooves that we've talked about already. And these are the alveoli. So that's it for the uh, palatine process. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Uh, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. See you in another video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.